turn off. Okay, now we're good. Now people can hear you. Man, look at the whole chat. I don't know. All right. Hi, buddy. I know. <clears throat> All right, so first things first, more important than any bowling balls. This is Storm. Storm likes treats. Can you sit? Or you can do that, too. That's a pretty cool trick. Good doggy. <laughs> I know. Okay. You guys get some, too. Mistle and Aspen, and he's so nice. He lets them get their treats, too. All right. You back up, buddy. Good doggy. And Aspen's turn. And Measle's turn. And he's so nice. You mm. are, aren't you? Mm. All right, that's enough. <clears throat> <laughs> they say no, mm. I want more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so after we lost uh, Panda Bear a couple months ago, we thought we'd see how it was being a two-dog house. <clears throat> and they were. They've just been absolutely miserable. They've been laying around. They haven't been doing anything. They've been pouting and just... Uh, they won't go outside, they won't play, they won't whatever else. And so we started fostering with the, uh, or we were going to foster with the intent to adopt. And he was the first one that we found the day after we decided to, to foster another dog. He's a husky. We're going to find, we're going to get a DNA test, find out exactly what he is. Uh, but he's definitely mostly husky. He's got he bright blue like eyes. <clears throat> he's super nice. The other two like him. This one, it takes her three. Uh, can they see her? It takes it takes missile three weeks just to even warm up to a foster at all, let alone play with them or hang out with them or have any kind of fun with them. And they all they all clicked instantly. They started playing. They're staying outside. They're they're hanging out. And he's just kind of the perfect dog. Hi, Pig Pig. And Pig Pig never comes over here because she's just terrified of all this stuff. But they've all gotten their comp storm. Storm dog, okay, or miss, or Aspen piggy. I know pig pig. They vote. They've, they've, <coughs> they've all gotten their confidence back, and he he'll play, but he doesn't push him too far. If they tell him no, he backs you off. You keep flipping under. Yeah, I know. I don't know how else to. Can you t flip like turn it to where the? Well, I mean, I can, but yeah. it's gonna stick out and. Well, it, at least it won't <clears throat> be muffled. Yeah. But anyway, so he's he's fit in great and. And uh, we actually went to a tournament over last weekend, and what's up? Keep talking. Oh. <clears throat> we went to a tournament last weekend, and we took him to another foster, uh, just so our just so our son wouldn't have to watch them all in case anything happened, but. As soon as we took him, the other two started moping and pouting around again, and they did, they were just over the moon when we picked him up and we got back. And and so we've been doing our normal due diligence with the fosters, and everything just clicked. And so he's he's staying. His name was Aspen when he got here, but we already had an Aspen, and of course we had to name him Storm. So <laughs> no, we actually considered the the name Bolt. Yeah, we considered Bolt, but it was a little too obvious and yeah. So we just went cliche, with the other next so, too obvious. Yep. Anyhow, y'all are here to watch bowling balls. This is the RSTX2, and it's kind of hard to see in the light. It looks like a high road pearl, kind of at first glance. But there's so much blue mica in it, or blue sparkles, or whatever. They call the color tanzanite, which is an actual mineral that looks like this. And so it's just a ridiculously cool ball. Once you get it under some light, it looks a whole lot bluer than, than purple. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to get to layouts. Go ahead and bring that over here. Yep, let me pull off the mag <clears throat> thing here. All right. Yep. This is uh, wearing one of the Coolwick jerseys that that I got sent. I think this is the comic. Yeah, I think com so. The comic quick ship. So this one's going to be Angels. 
This one's gonna be mine. The CG thing doesn't really matter anymore, but uh, my layouts have been my layout's gonna be something like this. So it's just that it's a little more friendly. Yeah, the, the CG is in a little bit better position for yeah. her, I guess. When we have two to choose from, then yeah, we have two to choose from. It's a it's a dumb thing, and if I got one of if if I got one of these and had to drill one of these, I wouldn't care. No. But just because we can pick, we did it this way. <clears throat> so this is the, I showed this before, this is the Storm Arc Ruler. So this is basically for laying out uh, bowling balls with the VLS system. It's 20 bucks as opposed to normal compasses that are 150. And I think shipping's like <clears throat> $10, somebody said. I don't uh, remember. Yeah, I don't know. So. But now you can lay out stuff with a with a ProSect, and I use a combination of the ProSect and this. <clears throat> and, you know, when you're laying Read out... Read the comments. What? Read the comments. <clears throat> Mike keeps going robot, bit-crushed audio hiccups. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure what the... I mean, it could be me clearing my throat, so... <laughs> that's probably what it is. Is it both the mics or is it just Luke? No, it, it's probably just fine. I just I just keep clearing my throat and that's probably what people are hearing. But I, I don't know. I can't. <clears throat> Funny enough, that triggered one. Interesting. Okay. Hopefully it's fine, but I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Everything's plugged in right, so freaking technology. I was uh, putting together, or starting to put together the reality and honey badger intensity reviews that I have coming, and I had plenty of other technical difficulties earlier, so that'd just be par for the course. Yes, the RST is, uh, is asymmetrical as labeled with the RST symbol slash logo slash whatever you want to call it. But back to the layout stuff, you can do the LS, you can do the LS. But we were having a conversation in our Discord earlier and doing the VLS system where you're dealing with actual ball measurements, it just helps you picture, or helps me picture, core orientation, exactly what you're doing, how you're tilting the core, how you're placing it inside the ball, and that just helps give me a better mental picture than degrees do. If you came up learning dual angle and use a prosect and dual angle, that's fine. You're going to get to the same place. But as far as um, dual angle helped me develop a good correlation with what angle did what. But uh, learning VLS helped give me a good understanding of, you know, why everything is the way that it is and what it does and so I start when I start thinking layouts now I don't think in angles or whatever else I think in you know core positions measurements whatever else and so it just it just I think it gives me a deeper understanding of why layouts do what they do and why bowling balls do what they do but I, di <clears throat> I digress I'm drinking uh, Sagatuck Brewing Company Cottonmouth Crusher Raspberry Sour Ale. It's That's not, a mouthful. Yeah. It's not incredibly sour at all. It's more tart. It's more of a tart fruit, fruit type of ale rather than a true sour. But it's still pretty tasty. I like raspberries. You like For the cover fruit. conspiracy theorists, I think this ball might be R3S Pearl. Well, we'll find out. Um, e tracks is, I believe, basically. Um, oh crap! I lost it. Whatever, whatever the cover that was the on the storm bite. Oh, that's an old. It one. was yeah. E R G, that's what it was. I think, E R G. Anyway. So it's a little bit stronger than, it's stronger and a little bit quicker, I think, for me than something like R2S Pearl. So it should be just kind of a buffed or kind of elevated 
version of the cover that's on the UC2. Um, if it was R3S, I'll be able to tell if it's R3S Pearl because R3S Pearl is really strong and it's really chuggy. Mm. So mm -hmm. we'll we'll see pretty pretty quick what it actually is or if it's just kind of an amped up version of uh, of E-Trax. Kind of along the lines of when Storm has R2S versus R2X, for example. It just add a little bit of nano and kind of buff the strength up and, and whatever else. So anyhow, I'm going to start laying stuff out. I kind of cheat on Angels because she has the same layout and it's really, really easy to get to where I want to get to. So her pin always goes above the bridge. That's easy to get to. And the mass bias or PSA is always two and a half inches away from her grip center line. So to make it really easy, this is not the way that you do this, by the way, but this is the way that I do it because I cheat. So what I'm going to do here <laughs> is I'm just going to take this. Uh, this is really, really easy to use. Now, it's not quite as precise as a normal compass because it only, you have a hole every quarter of an inch but if you're if you think that changing measurements more than a quarter of an inch or i guess less than a quarter of an inch actually matters then you know going ahead and spend the extra 130 dollars on a compass so um, i'm just going to put this in the little psa dot here i'm going to go to two and a half inches I'm going to make my little arc here, and then I'm going to use the Prosect to, you can't really see this, I'm going to use the Prosect to just split the, split the pin there, and then find the outside edge of the arc that I made, the far outside edge, right there, middle of the pin. I guess at least if you cheat on all my balls, then they'll be consistent. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to make the center line. So, that's totally not how you're supposed to do it, but like I said, she gets the same layout every single time. This just makes it simple. You can show the fancier way when you do yours. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually do it the proper way on mine. So... And I don't measure the difference in the fingers either because I've done this so many times that I can eyeball it. How many balls do you think you have drilled for me? I don't know, a couple hundred. So anyway, that's what Angel is gonna look like. Fingers are gonna go right there. Thumb's gonna go in a general this way, this kind of area. <clears throat> Five, <clears throat> sorry. We do have green thumb plugs, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Five by three and a half by three and a half. Um, something else that we're actually going to do on our new show is I'm going to show how to use an armadillo. This is an armadillo for finding access points. So what you do is you find wherever the track is at, and then you trace the first line just like finding a normal access point, but instead of using a spinner this has something to where you just line up the track with whatever line this is on or whatever line it fits best and then you make your little axis measurement over here and then just measure from the grip center over there to find your axis point so this is one of the things we're going to do on the uh, the bit called the breakdown where we do technical stuff we're going to show we're going to talk about layouts we're going to talk about surfaces we're going to talk about positive axis points and we're going to use this this fancy handy dandy armadillo. So, all right, I'm gonna show you how to actually do this the cor correct and proper way. So, my layout is, or the layout that I'm gonna use for this one, I've been using it for virtually everything, is four and three quarter by three and a half by three and a half. Autobots edition, yeah. It might sound like an Autobot trying to, yeah. This has been the day of this. This has been the day of technical issues, so it doesn't really surprise me that that would be happening. 
Okay, well let me, I'm gonna, you guys are probably gonna get an experience, a interruption in the stream for just a second. I'm gonna see what Wi-Fi my phone's connected to. Oh. So I'm gonna that have to close it this, so it's un momento. Yeah. Hang okay, should be back. All right, I'm gonna reset a mic here. All right, mic off, mic back on. Yes, it does look very purple and it's really hard to see on this, but once you get it in the light and it's like all sparkly, then it gets really, really blue. And I'm sure that you can't see that through the video, but it gets really, really blue when you've got any kind of a light on it. So it looks high road, it presents high road pearl, but when you look at it, it turns into a really, really deep sapphire. So anyhow, like I said, uh, four and three quarter by three and a half by three and a half. Uh, we were talking about layouts and stuff, and uh, somebody had actually made a comment on one of my Facebook posts. And the the whole point for both of our layouts, really, because they're not they're not that different. With the with the three and a half uh, pin buffer, which is basically it's somewhere in the neighborhood of forty five or fifty for a val angle. It kind of splits the difference between a pin up and a pin down. Now hers is pin up, but she's got kind of, she spins it a little bit. And so she's got a little bit of a different axis point. I'm actually going to uh, use the armadillo to, uh, to check her axis because I think it may have changed. So we're gonna, we're gonna break out the armadillo and use that and check. But the idea with kind of a kind of a middling or medium val angle or pin buffer is to kind of split the gap. Normally, if you go pin up or you have a shorter val angle or a shorter pin buffer, the ball reaction is going to be quicker. It's going to be sharper. And the longer you have that, the slower it's going to be down lane. So most people either go pin up or pin down and they kind of jump from one, not necessarily extreme, but one side to the other. Well, going in the middle with something like a 45 or a 50 val angle or a three and a half inch pin buffer kind of splits the difference. It's not super quick, but it's not super slow either. Nice, so sweetie. it's just nice yeah. and, you know, nice and easy. Storm. Now with the three and a half inch, uh, with the three and a half inch PSA to PAP mm -hmm. or initial or drilling angle, <laughs> going kind of medium on that too, again, does the same thing. It's a fairly strong, it's a fairly strong uh, PSA position, so it gets it to wind up really hard about 30, 35 feet down the lane. So you get a little bit of scoot up front. We don't have super strong pins. Hers is five inches, mine's four and three quarter. So they kind of, we get a little bit of push or a little bit of scoot through the fronts. The ball winds up really, really hard at 30, 35 feet and then it kind of eases its way in. So if you go back, you know, if you watch our reviews, even on the flippier stuff, you can see we both get really good push through the mids, it winds up hard, and then kind of walks in and is nice and continuous. So that's kind of the idea. It gives us a, a good look at ball reaction. It's consistent, it's controllable, continuous, uh, whatever All else the, the three C's. Hashtag huh? staffer, how many yeah, more yeah, words I can know. you use? How, how, many, how many buzzwords can I use here? <laughs> But anyway, it's just a nice, consistent, controllable layout. We're not trying to do anything specific. We're not trying to get the ball to hook a bunch. We're not trying to get the back end a bunch. Uh, whatever else, it's just kind of nice and right there in the middle. So anyhow, four and three quarter by three and a half by three and a half. So the first measurement is the pin to pap measurement. The second one is the PSA to pap measurement. And the third one is the pin buffer. Now, most of the time people will go, okay, well, I'm gonna do the pin to pap, and then I'm gonna move it down here, I'm gonna do the PSA to pap, and then I will do the pin buffer. But because I know pretty well exactly where all this stuff is gonna put me, um, I'm gonna try to do this upside down. Uh, I'm just gonna do both the pin to pap and the pin buffer at the same time. So you put the little, there's a little pin down here, you put that on the center of the pin then I'm gonna find the four and three quarter marker. And because I know that three and a half from the PSA 
to pap isn't very long. I'm going to put my arc down here. Now I'm going three and a half, so I'm going to find the three and a half mark. And because I have kind of a general idea of where that's going to end up, I'm going to go on ahead and make my pin buffer arc up here. And then I'm just going to move down to the PSA and make my, there's a little dot right in the center here. I don't know if you can see it, but the general overall PSA logo, there's always a mark or there's always a dot. So I'm looking for the dot and that's what I'm gonna measure off of. Because with something with a bigger logo like this, if you don't know, uh, you don't really know what to measure from. And with something this big, I mean, if you measure from over here versus over here, it's, I mean, that, that, that thing's an inch wide. So it's right in the middle. So I'm gonna put that right in the middle. I'm gonna find three and a half again, which is right there. Another little arc. And of course, like I said, I've done this a few times. So I know exactly where the arcs go. So once we get that done, so this is my pin to pap, this is my PSA to pap, and this is my pin buffer. So all I do, I find the intersection of these two marks, and then I make a line to the very outside edge of the pin buffer arc. So, What I'm going to do, that's there, that's the very outside arc, so center that, very outside of the pin buffer arc, this is my vertical axis line. And I know that you're all following this, there will be a test later. <laughs> so that gives my vertical axis line, and from there, um, this, is my, this is my axis point, or this is my positive axis point. So I'm going to measure basically backwards to find where this is going to put, you know, where this is going to put the fingers at. So where the fingers are at is not a layout. This is a layout, and this, the layout, tells me where the fingers are going to go. So when people ask for layout pictures in, uh, most people are just curious. It's like, oh, okay, well, where does, you know, just out of curiosity, where does this layout put the fingers for you on the ball? A lot of people want to see, okay, well, where's, I want to see the layout, I want to see the layout, but fingers are not a layout. Mm -hmm. So my axis point is five and three eighths over and one half of an inch up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure a half an inch down. No, Josh, you cannot phone Mr. Bill. Yeah. Ha, so ha, ha. Test is fine as long as he can phone Mr. Bill. Yeah. <laughs> um, only, only once, though. Yeah. Only on one question. So I'm going to measure a half an inch down and five and three eighths over. Oh, scratch tummies. Good boy. I'm going to do a 90 degree line nice. off of my vertical axis line. Nice. So I'm going to put the zero. There's these numbers on the front of the ProSec. I'm going to put the zero. I'm going to line the spine of this thing up with my vertical axis line. I'm going to put zero. On my pos on where I've identified the positive axis point, I'm going to measure down a half of an inch. I'm going to make a mark. Then I'm going to go 90 degrees. So I'm going to go 90 degrees here. There's a little dot so that this spine doesn't exactly line up with zero. There's a little circle right here where the zero mark is, so it's actually this edge, uh, sorry, this edge of the spine right here is zero, basically. So I'm going to line all that up. That's lined up with zero. I'm going to make my mark over this away. And I need to measure this now, so I'll try to flip this up and show you the numbers. So now I've made my mark. That's on zero. I'm going to come five and three eighths of an inch over here, make my mark. So five and three eighths is right there. I'm going to go 90 degrees once again off of this. This will make my grip center line. And if this you should like put. don't like math, don't do layouts. Huh? So if yeah. you don't like math, don't do layouts. So I'm going to go 90 degrees off of this line, 
and this is going to be my grip center line. And if I did this correctly, it should put the pin right in my ring finger. So, that's what we're looking at. So the fingers are going to go up here, fingers are up here, thumb is down here somewhere. So I have a four and a half ish inch span. I'm gonna measure up about two and a quarter inches. That's a good thing you can at least cheat on one of our stuff. Yep. And I have a pretty well at one, my ring finger span is four and four and nine sixteenths, and my middle finger span is four and four and a half plus whatever that is, four and seventeen thirty seconds or something like that. So I'll go on ahead and use the spine of the ProSec to put my bridge lines on. And there we have it. Snazzy. So, you can see the, the PSA is all the way down here. But, I did it correctly, so the drill bit is going to go right there. So I'm going to drill the pin straight out. You didn't start doing that until just recently, right? Yeah, actually the idle synergy. I talked to Rob and Dan quite a bit about my idle synergy layout and Dan liked drilling the, the pin out and so that kind of solved the pin up versus pin down thing for me because the pin up stuff was a little too much too early and a little too much You did that with motion. a few of your righty balls but not very many. Yeah, not very many. I did like it but um, I really liked both pin up and pin down stuff. Uh, depending on what I was kind of going for, but left-handed, uh, the pin down stuff is a little too long and slow, and the pin up stuff wants to start up too quick and do too much. And the pin in the ring finger has just been the dynamite nails layout for me on virtually everything. So since I tweaked my layout just a little bit, and like I said, the, the pin buffer was a big part of that going from five inch pin to pat pin up, and two and a half, uh, two and a half pin buffer. I've gone to three and a half pin buffer and four and three quarters. So the going up on the pin buffer a little bit allowed me to go with a slightly stronger pin, make it a little bit more continuous, get me a little bit further down the lane, make it a little bit more continuous. Um, oh, yeah. Stafford hype buzzwords and nonsense. So anyway, so that's the way too long and way too in-depth version of doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill Angel's Ball first, and then I will drill mine. So we're going to take you back over to the drill press here. here. Questions? Yeah, probably had to check. Put the magnet back each on E-Track seems to be a decent amount stronger than R2S to my eye. Yeah, it's... Uh, R2S is really clean, e trax is also pretty clean, but I think it's sharper, and I think it, it's it's definitely a bit stronger, but it kind of fits, because I, again, I think it's, it's based off of Storm's ERG, which is a very similar formula as far as ball reaction goes, but it's stronger. So... So, all right. This is going to be rounder than the Astro. I think it's actually going to be quicker than the Astro because the Astro is R2S Pearl. This is also kind of a full asymmetric, but it's got a higher RG. The Astro, I think, was 248 RG. This one's got a 252 RG. And so it's going to get a little bit more push, a little bit cleaner, a little bit stronger cover. And I'm not entirely sure what... Uh, what e -Trax Plus is all about yet. So that's still kind of a, a question mark or a small unknown at this point. It may be as simple as them going back to a previous formula because what they had done on stuff 
like the uh, like so we got the idle pearl it had e trax p18 then we go to e trax p19 then we have p20 that's on the nuclear cell and the nuke cell the nuke cover is orders of magnitude stronger than the idle pearl cover and so with the uc2 when they went back to just basic e trax they really really dialed the strength back again i don't know I don't know all this for certain, but you can't you can't throw a UC2 and a nuclear cell next to each other, or all these other ones with these variations of E-Trax Pearl on them, and tell me that the the nuke cell cover isn't significantly stronger than the idle Pearl cover for number one, and that it's not quite a bit stronger than the um, I think E-Trax P18 is even stronger than just the base E-Trax that's on the UC2. Now, stronger, not necessarily sharper. So, this is the bit, this is the 31, 30 seconds bit, which is standard for uh, finger grips. Unless you're using very small grips, the mist grips, which take a 7 8 bit. So we just go ahead and line that up. So Angel's got three eighths left in her middle finger. So we're gonna go to 375, that's the decimal conversion. She's also got an eighth reverse. So we're gonna go back to 0.125. Yeah. So I've got the uh, quarter of an inch for the bridge is fairly standard, but I bevel the fingers a fair amount. So I always go a little bit outside that line. So I intentionally miss that by about a 16th. And then this, the bottom edge down here, I wanna put right on the line. Ahead and tighten all my doohickeys up. Oh, did you give a shout out to James for learning his belt back? I oh no, I didn't. Back. I didn't hear anything about that. I saw somebody said congratulations to him earlier, but I didn't know. Yeah, it wasn't for the belt. The oh belt yeah. Was before the trip because he was gonna. He asked if he yeah, should yeah, yeah. the belt. Yeah, so he got his uh, southeast region UBA belt, UBA uh, yeah. championship belt back. I'm sure he talked about it on his stream, but. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, puppies? Oh my gosh, storm dog. For those of you that weren't here earlier, we have officially adopted Storm. Or we haven't officially adopted him, but they're sending paperwork. Yeah. Or and pending filling out of the paperwork, we have adopted him. Storm dog. Yeah. The uh, rescue has already approved us. Yep. <laughs> Which I guess if they're gonna let us foster the dogs, then they'll probably let us keep the dogs. Look at puppy. Okay. I've got a preset depth I drill the holes to. Normally I drill them about two inches. Just really enough to get the grip in there and give me a little space at the bottom of the hole. I'm not trying to do anything too science rocket-ish. So we're gonna go the opposite direction. She's got three eighths right in her ring finger and still the same eighth of an inch reverse in her, in her ring finger. Her span is uh, this full span, not to cut to cut. The full span is three and fifteen sixteenths by four and one thirty second. So not quite an eighth difference between the two. I'm gonna swing this up here.
just have to be careful on the ball speeds on the monitor. Sometimes they don't read correctly. Oh, yeah. Now, the ball speeds on the monitor read at the pins, I'm pretty sure. I think 90% of them do. Most of you know I'm sure that I do not like purple and I actually really like this ball. Because it's not purpley, it's bluish. Yeah, it's not it's not purple when you when you get it in your hands, it's a totally different look. It looks purple until you get it in your hands and then all of a sudden it's it's blue, it's like metallic blue. Yeah. There's purple, it's like there's purple mica in it, but it's blue. Yeah, which it's is kinda, super it's cool looking. Their, yeah. It's I don't know how they did it. And I Definitely not going to plug one of these because it's going to be impossible to plug, but all right. So Angel needs to pick her grip colors. And there's some other ones. Um, no, she's got one of each, well, except white. Yeah. The white grips back yeah. up there. Okay. Well, you got the, the green slug at least, yeah. right? So yeah, we're going to do a green slug. She always matches the slug color with the, uh, with the label color. And then she always gets a clear grip in her ring finger. I must think white ought to work. Because blue, it's not the right shade of blue. So, she's going to go in here. So, yeah, I think we're going to go white. All right, she wants to go white on the other finger grip. It kind of helps her tell stuff apart when she's got wild grips and if there's anything else on the, if there's other of the same ball on the rack. So. Oh yeah, I like the white in there. And so we're gonna go with a green slug. Bring that back over here, at least get it close enough for me to. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right, so. I use a trick for this. Uh, so when you drive the slug in, most of the time you go on ahead and you put glue down the sides. The glue is actually, this fits so well that the glue down the sides is more for lubricant just to get, it's easier to get the slug in the hole. But obviously you can't re use real lubricant or it'll slide around or it won't stick. So I use a couple different tricks, the first of which these are, you know, straight edges here. And most of the time what happens, if you don't bevel down these edges, all these edges do is just scrape the glue off the sides of the hole all the way to the bottom. And then you get glue all over the tip of your drill bit. So what I do is I take just the bevel sander and I round the edges, the bottom edges of the slug off so that the glue can get in between the side of the slug and the ball. So I'm not just putting glue in there and then the edges of this, the bottom edges of this thing are scraping it off. And then I just go make sure that I kind of reestablish the vent slit. The vent slit on the side of the slug here is to allow air to escape when you're driving the when you're driving the slug and also when you're drilling a slug you always want to drill through the bottom of the slug because that will also vent your thumb hole later so that you don't get a vacuum type effect some there is such a thing as it fitting too well and so you always want to punch through the bottom of the slug with the drill bit when you're drilling the slug so, I got my slug prepped. 
Got a brand new, nice, freshy inch and an eighth bit to uh, pilot the hole with. After I do the hacking measurements, So, my span ruler, I'm going to measure 3 and 15 sixteenths. We are getting Zen and Masters. that should be 4 and a 30 second. Make my mark here. That ring grip is just a little high, but I have tricks for that too. Tricks for everything. 3 and 15 <laughs> sixteenths. And that's, that's a 64th long, ladies and gentlemen. I missed by a 64th, but I can fix it. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her thumb bit size in here. It needs to be Vegas Lou or something. Yeah. So I'm going to move that just a hair bit off the side of the center line because it'll make this span a little bit longer and shorten up this span like I said is a 64th too long which in the grand scheme of which actually doesn't matter at all whatsoever but if I shift the thumb just a tiny bit then I can get them both to line back up so I'm moving it I'm moving the bit a 64th off of the center line and then I'm going to go ahead and start the pilot hole so that I can measure first. I'm not just going to make my line and punch the hole. I measure several times to make sure that everything's gravy. So, Because you already said you don't want to plug yeah. it again. If I will make you plug it again. So, I nailed the line. Now I just have to measure again and make sure. So that I still vote is, Vegas, Lou. All right, so that's 3 and 15 sixteenths. And that has dropped this edge down to 4 and a 30 second. So, we're good. Sweet. So, now that we're prepped, I'm going to use the inch and an eighth bit to pilot the hole. Saves oh. wear and, it saves wear and tear on the inch and a quarter. These uh, normal slugs are inch and a quarter. That's kind of the standard size. They do have inch and an eighth, inch and three eighths, and inch and a half. But inch and a quarter is kind of the standard size. So I'm going to use inch and an eighth to pilot the hole. It's going to save a little bit of wear and tear on my inch and a quarter bit. So and also that helps it get a little bit truer, truer cut. So we the hole is super tight. We don't have that many tight. gems, Lou. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> to Lou or he's going to leave.
go back down through one more time, just a hair bit slower. Just make sure the sides of the hole are really clean. Sometimes if you go too fast, you can actually not get that clean of a cut. And that will add unnecessary friction to plug installation. And that doesn't need to be any more interesting than it already is. Looking forward to seeing you again in Vegas, Lou, next year. size here. I'm just I still call loser of that match. Okay. If that if that goes in that far that easy, it should just should slip right in. It should be pretty easy to so take our glue bottle. Hopefully it's open. Like I said, the fit on this, is, the fit on the slug is normally tight enough to where you don't actually need the glue to hold the slug in place. You need the glue more for lubricant to get the slug to slide in easier. So, that's done. All right, so, Mr. Bill, plug your ears if you're in here. Yeah, it just squeaks. Look how perfect that is. I'm going to barely have to shave this thing down either. There's no reason to leave, uh, you know, leave so much over top of it to cut off. All I'm trying to do is just cut off the top. So the people that leave like a half inch or three quarters of an inch of slug above the hole, I don't understand that. More to. This is about as close as you want to get it because any closer and you're just going to trim the edges off and it's still going to be a little flat on top, but this one's going to be perfect, so. <laughs> Angel's, Angel's thumb hole is 25, 30 seconds at an 060 oval angle. Uh, it's 45 degree oval angle as well. That's pretty standard or typical. So I'm going to drill the hole first, and then I'm going to make two cuts. If you make too many cuts too quick, you end up with ridges in the hole. So you have to go, when you're doing an oval, you have to make it wider, little by little. Oh no, it is fine. And it's going to flap around up there. So you have to kind of go little by little when you're doing an oval, just so you don't get ridges in the thumb hole. Remember what I said, you always want to go through the bottom of the thumb slug because that'll, uh, that'll help to vent your thumb hole so that you don't get any kind of vacuum effect. Remember the vent slit that we were talking about on the back of the, the, back of the thumb slug, it serves kind of a dual purpose. First to allow air to escape when you're installing the thumb slug and then allowing air to also escape when you're actually allowing air back in when you're uh, when you're uh, letting go of the ball. So now, hopefully prevent it from going flying towards the ceiling tiles. Yeah. O21 right, O21 reverse, and we're gonna make another cut. <laughs> deal. One more cut. Here we go 21 again and 021 which goes to 42 and 42. 
Make one more cut. Cuts are made, now it's time to trim the top of the slug off. So very important thing that every pro shop operator will at some point in their career forget. Reset the pitches to zero. Otherwise the router bit will cut the living crap out of the ball. Every pro shop operator on the planet has been in a hurry and has put the one bit back, grabbed the router bit and started to pull the hammer down and then all of a sudden gouged the crap out of the ball. So, lock everything back down. Um, she started at zero. That's her thumb pitch is just zero any direction. So it's a whole lot easier to do that. You don't have to rearrange. You don't have to readjust and make sure that you center the. You always want to center the the slug underneath the hosel here, or the center of the center of the bit. Just makes driving it a little bit easier. It makes the you know cutting it. Uh, a little bit more uniform and consistent, so. So I've gotten this router bit to just about the perfect level of sharpness. When they're dead fresh, you're gonna cut the ball. You're just gonna cut the ball because they're super, super fresh and so it's just going to, it's just gonna scratch it. Uh, so the best thing to do with one of those when they're fresh is cut a lot of plug with them first. That'll take the edge off or that won't dull them down really, but it'll just take the sharp edge off. Once you get it to the sweet spot, then having the, uh, having the lines on here, once the lines start disappearing, you know that you're close. But once you get it to that nice, that nice spot, you can let it, you can pump it a couple times. You can let it hum around the top to really get a good, completely, uh, you know, completely uh, uh, flat, uniform level surface without actually cutting the ball, so. All right, so we're gonna put that off to the side for a moment. We're going ahead and drill mine, and I'm just gonna just gonna go right through it. Yeah, if you have questions, yeah. say something. Otherwise, he's just gonna drill. So I need more grips. I think you have more. I think they're just yeah, they're more. down there in the bottom somewhere. I like uh, Turbo Quad Classics. What's up, Storm Dog? Storm Dog. What you doing? Hi. What are you doing, Stormy Dog? Hi. Come nice here. Stormy Dog. Did you come say hi? Storm Dog. You want a treat? Come here. What about a treat? Can you say hi? Mm-hmm. Here. How about yep. put your paws up? There you go, buddy. There you go. Storm Dog. Very nice. Good Storm Thank Dog. You. You're the good Storm Dog. You want dog. a treat? You want yep. a treat? And too? he's super patient. He lets them get their treats. Yeah, there you go. Let's see. And then Storm Dog gets another one. What you got, Storm Dog? Yep. A little fishy? There you go. You got some fishies Good left. Storm Dog. Yes. Mm-hmm. There you go. Good Storm Dog. All right, here. Let's go walk over here out of the way. I'll take him with me. Come here. Go get some more. Yes. We're going we're gonna to order a DNA test and see exactly what he is. Whoa. He's I'm definitely sorry. mostly husky. Sure. I think he might be a little German Shepherd just because of his build. I know the coloring doesn't really... Doesn't really match that, but when they're mixes like that, stuff can come out a little wonky. Yeah, his uh, bone structure. Yeah, kinda. his bone structure, he's kind of built, his his back hips are a little bit lower, and he's kind of got that lanky, 
German Shepherd look to him. Nice. Good job. Uh, and he might, okay, be, one more. might be a little, I don't know, Akita or something like that. He's got a really super floofy tail. And it's got Very a little bit nice. of a corkscrew or a curl and it. it doesn't just stand straight up behind him like normal huskies do. It's got just a little bit of a curl to it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use a purple slug just to get it to All done. blend in. Thank and you. I'm gonna prep my slug the same way that I prepped hers. I'm gonna shave this. Okay, Fluffy, you're gonna turn blue. Yeah. Yeah, I got stuff all over my phone from the last yeah. one. Come here. Go on, puppy. Over here. I know. Come here. So I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. shave this edge off. Shave it down. Mm -hmm. There you go. You can go down there if you want. You want to your crate? You can hit. I know. <laughs> they're both packing tails. I know. They're just playing. Yeah, they're actually pretty aggressively playing with each other. Like, they're really getting into it. They're not mad and they're not... They kind of challenge each other and they kind of bark at you. That was that little bark bark down there was them kind of. That was missile. Saying, yeah, let's. Oh, there's him. Yeah. They're kind of egging each other on. All right. <laughs> <coughs> Grips are prepped, slugs are prepped. My stats and the fingers are three eighths each direction, so three eighths left in the ring finger, three eighths right in the middle finger, uh, one eighth reverse in both fingers. I have a four and nine sixteenths by four and seventeen thirty second span, or four and a half plus. Basically, that's the easiest way to easiest way to do it. And I've just got a round thumb hole, twenty one or twenty seven thirty seconds. Uh, yes, the fridge is actually somewhat of a new addition. That's our old fridge out of our kitchen. Yeah, we got a, uh, yesterday. Yes. Today, yesterday was our anniversary. Uh, 13 years, lucky number 13. And Angel got a new fridge. So we moved the old fridge out we here. We got a new fridge. What are you doing yeah. this? Yeah. Well, we, yeah, we did get a new fridge because I, I got a kind of a beer fridge, beer and snack fridge yeah. out here now. The new fridge is very nice, though. But anyhow, go ahead and line myself up. Again, 375, 125. Uh, my thumb hole, once again, is just 27, 30 seconds round. The technical term is piano hands for all you comedians out there. And I have an eighth reverse in my thumb. Everybody wants a promotion now, Kyle. Yeah. Now that they're not available, everybody yeah. wants a promotion. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was ahead of the curve way back when. I knew what was going on, and the rest of these idiots just had to mess around and get it discontinued. That's uh, okay, because I have can, all of them now. It's the Jayhawk Trioval. Jayhawk Trioval. This is the top of the line, best you can get. Well, there's a couple fancier ones, but this well, one's... Eh, not really. This one's the best. Well, there's, you can get, I think, fancier like attachments or something. Yes. But this one's. <laughs> yeah, the chicken's playing now. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. So we're going to drill the pin pretty well straight out. Sometimes they can be difficult to yeah. drill, but Go ahead. Um, the okay, one, so the, the global ones that we just drilled, I drilled the pin out on both the Reality and the Honey Badger Intensity, and those mm -hmm. both came right out silky smooth. They Go used side. to be more plasticky and kind of Go would, Go a little Whistle. plasticky, Go a side. little harder, and kind of divert the bit in a few different directions, but we're all lined up, ready to go. So. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's drilling right out just fine. Sometimes you can see the bit bounce around or jump around if the pin is shoving it one way or the other. And the 
the difference in my grip sizes make up for the difference in my span. So literally all I have to do is go 3 8 the opposite direction and move the bit laterally until I get it where I want and I don't have to move it front to back at all. So I just gotta adjust this, put that where I want it, tighten it back up and just drill the hole. I don't have to adjust front to back at all. My middle finger being just a little bit bigger than my ring finger, the difference in the grip sizes is 1 32nd. So, or the difference in the, the thickness on the front side of the grip. saying earlier, uh, I'm working on Honey Badger intensity and reality videos, reviews, and then we have Zen Mask. These showed up today. Um, they were pretty late because I could have put a video up yesterday, but stuff's been a little crazy, so I got them a couple weeks later than normal, but it's no big deal. So, and then all I have to do with this is just go back 125 the opposite direction for an eighth reverse in the thumb. So we got these today. Hopefully going to get out and get video tomorrow. We've also got that. Zen Masters showing up tomorrow. So hopefully they'll show up at a reasonable time. I can get holes in them. We can go get video for them. And hopefully have reviews out for both of these next weekend. I'm out of, I work out of town. Okay for my job, so I won't be able to, it'll give me time to, you know, write reviews and kind of get that kind of thing figured out for both of them. But then I'll start putting videos together when I get back on Thursday. So four and nine sixteenths, four and 17, 30 seconds, four and a half plus, basically the same thing, okay. an easier way to say it. Redouble check my line after I made it. Four and nine. Four and a half plus. Bam. Twenty-seven thirty seconds bit. Oh, so you nailed yours, but you couldn't nail mine. Mine's easier. I don't even have to. I don't even have to mess with it. I mean, it would actually be difficult to mess mine up. And yeah, I, I messed yours up. I missed by a whole sixty-fourth of an inch. <laughs> most people drill. Most people drill to an eighth. They don't even drill to. They figure if they get it within, they get it within an eighth of an inch that they're good, which is just absolutely cataclysmically terrible. A sixteenth is acceptable, but that's not even. I mean, if I don't, if I don't split the hash mark on the ruler, I don't say that that's close. I don't think it's reasonable unless. Because all you have to do is just measure a couple times and pay a little bit of attention. This isn't hard to do. Go ahead. Having perfect vision helps too, but all right. So that's, I know you can't see it because I'm in the way. While I'm in the way, check out this nice jersey from uh, CoolWick.com. Use promo code ROSEDOLL10 to get 10% off your order. So, that's pretty good. So once again, I'm going to use the inch and an eighth bit to pilot the thumb hole.
Yep. Measure three times, cut one. No reason to screw something up when you could just take 10 extra seconds and do it right the first time. Or in loose case, measure 10 times and cut twice. I like the clear quad classics because they feel like sticking your fingers in a couple of gummy bears. Have you actually done that to say that? We had that giant gummy bear. <laughs> that I threw away. Uh-huh. That tasted fantastic, by the way. <laughs> that gummy bear tastes exactly like the dark code smells. <laughs> she threw it away. And he tried to get another one in Vegas. Oh, my God. I like two-pound gummy bears. <sighs> All right, so once again, the glue is more for lubrication of the thumb hole than it is to actually hold the slug in there. But it does help. It does help, but... Otherwise, you just use once water. Again, this should just slide right in there. Yes, the dark code does smell fantastic. Man. Means you're pretty. Stole your water bottle. Hmm. A, sh a certain Sean Rash line came to mind. Yo. Oh. Yeah, I don't think that's probably appropriate for YouTube. Yeah, I probably should not. Yeah, it's not appropriate for YouTube and probably shouldn't call my wife that. Boy, it'd be funny, though. All right. It's a little warm out here. I am the one holding the said water bottle. And, and I, I am... sweat like a pig. Mm. 27, 30 seconds round. <laughs> reason I go up and down so often is to clear the shavings out of the bottom of the hole because sometimes they can get bound up down there and actually divert the bit. So to get the truest, cleanest thumb cut possible, 
I, I drill, I don't know, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch, back it off, clear the shavings, drill another little bit, clear the shavings back and forth until I get, get the thumb hole done. So once again, resetting pitch is very important. I will adjust this just a little bit, make sure it's right underneath it. It'll start, because of the, because I did have a little bit of pitch in the thumb hole, it'll start cutting on the back of the slug first. This sucker is right at the sweet spot. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right. Now I'm gonna show you my little tricks for prepping the finger holes. Pull out need this to go magnets. Get, I do need to go get a different ball to, where's my, my intensita? My intensita. I can go grab them. No, it's right here. Oh, that's right, because you haven't put our bowling balls away yet. Yeah, well, because we were going to go back out. Thanks, uh, FedEx. Oh, yeah, there's that. Honey Badger Intensita. Hi, buddy. You good, buddy? You good storm dog? You good storm dog? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Is that the height you want it? For your whatever you're doing? That should work. Okay. All right. We're gonna take the grips out. Wipe all of our markings off first. <laughs> you good. You good puppy dogs. Yes, you is. You good puppy dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. And then we're gonna give a pretty good bevel on the finger holes. How well you can see that. Let's do it this way. We'll give you we'll give you the true like straight up right on top of it perspective. I do this number one is because a rounder edge at the top of the thumb hole will help uh, reduce so if, if, if the ball hits something funny sideways in the back of the pit a rounder edge will spread out the impact a little bit more and will give you more protection against chips cracking whatever else it also uh, you know have not having a sharp edge on it in the bridge inspection world we call those stress risers there are points where a, a very small amount of impact or force or whatever else can cause a rift, split, oh crack, what have you. Mm -hmm. And so by rounding the edges of the thumb hole, it takes impacts better. Plus it also way. reduces the likelihood of a crack starting from your finger grips mm -hmm. or from your... 
finger area. Plus, I do kind of a hybrid vacuum grip. So what happens here, where did I put my finger grips? So what happens here is that by beveling out the very tops of the holes, if you look at your finger, you know, the, uh, yeah, okay, that won't be good for YouTube. Let's use my first finger. So it'll be, it's smaller at the tip of the finger than it is at the knuckle. And so I don't like making, uh, having a bigger grip or making it fit at the knuckle, but then you have, you know, movement room down here. I don't like that. I like to like it to fit down here and also fit down here. So I use a little bit smaller grip. I use like a half size smaller than what I would need. And so it makes the grips a little tight. And so all I do is give a little extra buzzing on the top of the finger hole so that when I put my finger in there, I feel it snug all the way around. So like I said, these are these are like putting your fingers in some gummy bears. <clears throat> so, test that out. That, you know, snugs up exactly where it should. It gets right in there and stops right exactly at the top of the hole. So I'd say that that's pretty close. Ring finger normally takes a little bit of extra buzz. And yeah, that's, that's, that's too snug up at the top. So I need to do a little bit more work on my ring finger here. <laughs> at the very top so that snugs up just about right there right about where I want it to so I think they sh that should work normally once I glue them in it uh, they snug up just a little bit more than they feel like right here uh, the pin is in the middle finger middle. ring finger sorry ring finger middle finger for a righty yes So that kind of snugs up. Again, that kind of snugs up right where I want it to. I'm going to do just a little bit more at the top of that because, like I said, normally I, they feel fine, then I get them glued in and they're a little snug. So. <laughs> Again, just a little bit, a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these in. All right. Make sure all the dust is out of there. Glue doesn't like dust. No, he doesn't clean the grips with acetone or anything. Just wipes them off. So I always like to glue the inset first, that's, or glue the bridge side first, that way you can get it the right height, basically. And I always go down underneath the cover stock. That's another thing that'll help prevent cracking. If you have a bowl that has a bunch of the circular cracks, up top around the fingers. Most of the time that's caused by too much glue or too much glue too close to the surface of the ball. Because glue swells, it gets in the pore that, I mean, basically uh, it, it's built to get inside the pores of the ball, create a good bond so that the finger grips don't come out. Well, what it actually does, or what it also does is that glue expands and contracts at a different rate than the cover of the ball does. It's like water and concrete. So, swelling, shrinking, swelling, shrinking, swelling, shrinking, eventually makes the cover stock around the top of the holes brittle, 
and it starts the circular cracks up there. So, this, my kind of techniques here do several different things at the same time. It's not just kind of, oh, this is the way I want to do it, and so this is the way I do it. There's actually, there's actually quite a bit of thought that goes into it, and when I see these posts all over the place, oh, my ball crack, my ball crack, my ball crack, whatever else, I mean, you guys know how many balls we drill, how many balls we go through, and I don't have... <coughs> I think the only cracked balls we have down there are like 20 years old that have been sitting on a shelf out for whatever. But if you actually drill them the correct way, store them the correct way, we don't. We have ex exactly zero balls that are cracked down there that have been drilled the correct way and stored the correct way. Hmm. Most of the time, if we have stuff you that's still just have like the, what is it, hot wire? Yeah, the hot wire that hasn't cracked. Yeah, that that's, that's been sitting on a shelf for you know the last six, seven years. Yeah, and it's been plugged and re-drilled also. All right. So. Because it was his, and he plugged it and re-drilled it for me. Go back down here on the other side, once again underneath the cover stock, or kind of right at that line. Once you, uh, once you put some glue in there and then, you know, get it sealed like this, it's going to creep up a little bit. And the other thing is, too, it doesn't take much glue. All I'm doing is gluing the bridge side and then the opposite side with just a couple little drops because it really doesn't take much glue to lock it down. The more glue you put in there, the more chance there is for, see that's nice and, it's nice and flat. So the more glue you put in there, the more chance there is to make stuff crack around the top and the more cracking there's around the top, the more possibility there is for a stress riser to pop up. One more side. And then by leaving the front and back, you've added shims before. <clears throat> yes, that's another thing, is when you glue the sides, that's the easiest way to get the, get the grips flat on top to begin with. But you can also add little shims in the front of the back if your fingers swell or shrink or whatever else. So if they shrink and you need to tighten them up, I usually take an it collar or the top of a, you know, the top ring that goes around the slug on an it interchangeable system. And I cut that up because they're already kind of rounded and contoured for this. But with this technique, I don't need the shims anymore because the grips kind of flex with my fingers. <clears throat> so. We have a mostly finished product. I'll go on ahead and finish off the thumb, but it really doesn't take a whole lot. It's just a little bit of bevel at the top, and then I'll kind of explain the fingers to you again. So, bam, gives me a little bit of dig, fits like a glove. So, once again here, up top on the fingers, they're nice, <clears throat> they're nice and rounded off so that we give the edge of this more impact absorption spreads out you're rounding it off smoothing it off spreads out impacts a little bit it's not a hard edge and if you have a hard edge too it makes it constricts at the top of your grips um, i also only glue on the sides but i also glue down further so you know i've got plenty of flex <clears throat> plenty of flexibility around the top of the grip but it's not coming out because there's glue down further inside there, but again, you know, you don't need, you don't need a whole lot of, you know, I can, I can pick this, if I was strong enough, I could pick this up with something that I just glued a minute ago, because you don't need that much glue in these, in these finger holes. 
Provided so, you don't have crappy glue. Yeah, provided you don't have crappy glue. I use Turbo Slow Zip. This is the best stuff because it gives you it gives you a couple seconds to get the grip set where you want it at. It doesn't lock up right away like Loctite or super glue or something else. So I like it quite a bit. Obviously, it holds nice and firm. So I could pick the ball up with the grip just having a drop of glue on one side, drop of glue on the other side. Once again, this also gives me flex at the top of the grip for my knuckle. So hmm. I get my fingers in and I got a little bit of a dig going. Talk about the proper way to store the balls. So. And when traveling also. Yep, I can do that. So I get that nice dig that I like. They're, they're snug up at the knuckle, but you know, instead of getting here and getting stuck or whatever, I can kind of work my finger in. It snugs right up, feels great. I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room at the tip of my fingers. And then just enough, just enough bevel on that, on that thumb hole. You don't want a whole lot of bevel on the thumb hole because <clears throat> you If somebody it, wants too much bevel, would it be probably make a pitch adjustment? Yes, yeah, so if somebody, bevel and pitch adjustments usually chase themselves because what you want to do is you want to keep your thumb as straight up and down in the hole as possible. Once you start adding too much bevel, then your thumb starts walking all, it gives way too much flex to your thumb and that lets your, you know, that lets your hand cheat up this way or cheat back this way or whatever else. But if you have just kind of a straight up and down thumb, it keeps your finger, it keeps your thumb straight up and down in the thumb hole. You don't have a whole lot of wandering and then just right out. So you want it to come, you know, right straight out of the thumb hole. You don't want it rolling over the front side of that thumb hole. That's where a lot of friction is created from. So you want your thumb straight up and down in the hole and be able to just come straight out of it. So the proper way to store bowling ball is back in the bag that it came in and the original box it came in. Because what you're doing there is you're locking it up and you're preventing moisture loss out of the cover, which is a big thing. <clears throat> so that and ideally put it somewhere where there's not a whole lot of temperature fluctuation. So if you have a, a basement, that, that's a great place to put them. Yeah, something temperature controlled. Yeah, temperature controlled, but you don't want them sitting out. And this may or may not be scientifically correct, but I also like to put them finger holes down because just the natural effects of gravity. If you have the finger holes sitting up, the ball is pulling, everything's wanting to pull this way. You know, gravity is wanting to pull the entire thing down and because it's resting on a very small point at the bottom, it makes these want to pull apart. And so that will, in theory, make the fingers want to pull away from each other. But if you store the ball upside down, then it's, you know, there, there's nothing up here to, there's no hole, rift, uh, cut, crack whatever else for this to pull on oh, this but when you cool. store it with the holes up there is a hole in the ball or something that yeah. you know some kind of rift or fissure or whatever else for it to pull apart so and it sounds so weird but i mean once you put the holes in the ball it's meant to be thrown and so actually the best thing for the ball is to throw it repeatedly yeah at so stupid it, white sticks and again and again because uh because if you, it's just gravity. If you leave something sitting in one place for so long, the gravity is pulling on the same location indefinitely. Which is why a lot of people will say, well, I went and rotated my balls and then I found something cracked. Well, if you are storing them properly and doing everything else, then it, yeah. maybe it goes back to, you know, the <sighs> different things that you were talking about earlier as far as the glue and the yeah. the bevel and the whatever else that they're and maybe it's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So when you add it all together, now you've got a bigger problem. Yeah, but at the and at the same time, that's a lot of the reason for really beveling out around the top of the holes. So you just reduce any kind of stress points for the ball to start cracking along. It takes impacts better, resists stress better. And it gives you more flexibility at the top of the hole to fit your knuckle a little bit better. So if my fingers swell up a little bit, I'm still going to get, it might be, a, I might have to jam them in a little bit more, but I will still be able to get them in because the finger grips are squishy and flexible. 
and I've got some extra flex up at the top here. So the, the grips will snug up on my fingers just the way that they are. But if I do need that extra little bit of jam room, if my fingers, if my fingers do swell up a little bit, I do have, I have the room and I have the flex to go on ahead and do that. <clears throat> so that is my RST X2. I'm going to go on ahead and finish off the Weiss ball the same way. Her grips fit a little bit truer, not necessarily better. They fit a little bit truer than mine do. So I really just round off the top of hers. I don't actually do a whole lot of extra beveling or uh, material removal. <clears throat> Just going ahead and wipe them down. She also likes a really, really sharp, not a really sharp, but she likes a pretty sharp thumb. So got to be pretty careful on that, but I've got that, uh, I've got that figured out pretty well too. of the fingers nice and beveled up and all I do is hit the top of her thumb once with a somewhat worn in pad. So all I do is just kind of pop it. Yeah. And it'll should be ready to go here. Yeah. Zero in the thumb and basically no bevel. Her grip's going in a little tough so it might be just a little tight but I doubt it. <laughs> snug at the top it's a little snugger than the it's not bad but i think it's different enough than the other ones it's going to bother me so yeah. probably go ahead just a little bit <laughs> as soon as i switch from that one to something else or vice versa it'll really stand out. Yeah, that's better. That's right, right past the knuckle. How do the Storm brand balls hold up against Lane, Sh Lane Shine? Seems all the brands of Brunswick Lane Shine really quick. It It's more a, more a uh, uh, product of how dull the ball starts out because uh, everything is going to lay and shine fairly quick unless it's a really hard unless it's a really hard surface because you throw it you throw it on the lanes you get it, it it's hitting machinery in the back it's being sent back by, by the ball wheels all of which are polishing the ball so the duller it starts out the quicker it's going to lay and shine so that's <clears throat> it's not a it's not a product of what what brand of ball you're throwing. If you start out something at 2,000 grit, it's going to be kind of shiny within four or five games. So you're just going to have to keep putting the surface back on it if you want it that dull to begin with. I don't really like it that dull, so I like to use Reacta Scuff for my sanded stuff because it takes the ball back to about a 3,000 grit sheen, and it. It removes a lot of the surface scratches, belt marks, whatever else. Uh, it gets a real deep clean on the ball. Plus, it takes it back to pretty well what I think is a perfect surface. Most of the time, you don't need a 2,000 grit surface. That's that's a lot, unless you're uh, unless you're bowling on heavier volumes, tougher stuff, whatever else. But for like a league shot, 
If you don't like Lane Shine, I really like React to Scuff that does several different things at the same time. So, going ahead and once again, so slow zip gives me a couple seconds to get the grip set where I wanted, where I want it. Also, something really cool. <clears throat> yeah, the, the green thumb slug hurts your eyes, but it matches with the labels. Yes. As I long like, as it's available, I want the thumb slug to match the label color. Yeah, I kind of, every once in a while, I like a bright colored thumb slug, but with left-handed balls, something that you'll notice is that all the labels are kind of on the left or on the left side of the ball so when you throw them right-handed you don't really see a whole lot of the labels well when you're throwing stuff left-handed all you see is just labels everywhere so i don't really need a thumb slug to to see anything even in the solid color balls which i can read ball reaction well enough that i don't need the finger grips or thumb slug or whatever else rolling around just kind of distracting and I purely like it for when it's sitting on the rack itself. Yeah. Because then when four people have RSTX2s on the rack, I know which one's mine. So yeah, if you like, if you like 500 to 1500 grit surfaces, you're just gonna have to add surface pretty well every single league night. Uh, they've done several tests. If you go, if you look up a, uh, Jayhawk Bowling Supply has a surface scanner, and they've done a couple videos on it showing that uh, how quickly the surface disappears on a ball just because you throw it time after time after time, and the you know the lane polishes it a little bit. It hitting stuff in the back flattens it out a little bit. Coming back on the return tracks and the return wheels and all that stuff uh, shines the ball up pretty quickly. So once again, we're putting yeah, glue so I down. I don't think people really, when they think about the ball going down the lane, they think about the oil, but they don't think about all yeah. of the leftover oil that's in the pits and then the ball track coming back up plus the ball return. Yeah, the it's ball just, return, the, the wheels and the track and all that stuff. It's not that it's necessarily totally forgotten. It's just not in the mathematics of... Yeah, you just don't think about it. Something else for those of you that glue in your own grips, you see on the top of this glue bottle, this is a flexi tip. So most of the time the glue bottles will glue themselves shut before you're, you know, several times before you're done with the bottle. And so you'll have to keep clipping the top off and clipping the top off or poking a, um, poking a pin down in there, but that also tends to push little pieces of hardened glue back down in there, which causes a problem. So the flexi tips, are basically bottle tip extensions. So you cut the top of the glue bottle off, you put one of these things on the top of the neck, and then you can just gradually clip these down as they get, uh, as they glue themselves shut so that you can leave the glue bottle kind of the same length. Uh, as you cut down on the glue bottle, it makes the opening larger and larger and larger, and so it makes it harder to control the amount of glue that comes out. Mm -hmm. So these little, they're called flexi tips for anybody interested. And they also make it a whole lot easier to get down the side of the grip, especially these smaller grips that aren't very flexible. You end up using the entire glue bottle as opposed to it yeah all the hardening before you can use it or at least most of the glue bottle so once again you have bevel at the top nice and it's so you pretty glue them in right the green labels do help nice and flush so what purple it does actually have in it the green labels help i'm i'm okay with this yeah i don't know how well you can I'm gonna put this up here, see if I can get the camera to pick up on the nonsense. But if you can see that, 
as soon as you're in the light and have it up close to you, it reads very purple from kind of a distance. But as soon as you get right up on the ball, all of a sudden, all you see is blue right where your the focal points are at. So you get it in the light and it's got this really nice deep blue metallic look to it. So this is just, it's just one of the coolest balls I've ever seen. And that's what somebody was saying is like, think, think uh, a high road pearl with more shimmer. Um, you might have to turn the sound up on your end. I've got, I'm not quite chewing on the microphone, but I'm pretty close, so. So yep, that's what the RST X2 looks like. We are just about at the conclusion of our drilling stream. I want to thank everybody for hanging out. Uh, we have Zen Masters that should be here tomorrow, so we're going to go film for RST X2s and Zen Masters tomorrow. So. And then with leaving for work, then. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I won't have, hopefully, I will have Honey Badger Intensity and Reality videos up tomorrow. I've got everything prepped. I just have to build the videos now. So we should have Honey Badger Intensity and reality videos tomorrow, but we are getting in Zen Masters and do need to get those drilled and then head over and get at least the, the RSTX2s and the Zen Masters films so I can start writing reviews so that I can be ready to build stuff when I get back home at the end of the week on Thursday. So hopefully we'll have all this stuff up. We'll see what happens. Uh, the plant's a little backed up, so I got stuff a little bit later than normal. And then FedEx always sucks, so should have had these on Thursday and Friday. Got them instead on Saturday and Sunday, so um, it is what it is. But I'm sure it's because everybody's ordering, but when you expect oh yeah. a delivery, and, and that, it that's says... The, that's the thing. That I think I don't, I'm not sure that they... I, I think they're their estimates are a little aggressive. Yeah, the actual FedEx delivery people have always been fantastic. It's yeah, the... the uh, yeah, our, our delivery driver, she's freaking awesome. We've had Love probably... Love her, but it's just tricky actually We've had like three or four, because usually here. it's not the girl when we have the Chewy order deliver. Uh -huh. But yeah, all the FedEx de the delivery people have been fantastic. But yeah. whoever is running the uh, delivery expected Ooh. date is no. They're wrong. <laughs> so, Storm Dog. He's passed out on the futon. I'm not sure you're going to oh. get him. Storm Dog. I want the Storm Dog to come sign off. Oh. Storm Dog. Come there here, buddy. Comes. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Oh, you're going to get all three of come them. Come here, Storm Dog. Hi, buddy. This is our new adoptee and Missile Dog. You want to get the treats out again? Making we'll a get friendship. Them all. all right. You want to treat Aspen Pig? Come here, Pig Pig. All right. Tallest doggo gets a treat first. And you're so nice, aren't you? Yes, you are. And then you're so nice, so you let the other doggies get their treats. Yeah, he just watches. Like, uh -huh. is it mine? He doesn't is it try mine? to steal the treats from the other doggies. And then he gets his little bit. So this is our newest, that's for Mistel, Aspen Pig Dog, I know, you're a little chompy, and then Storm Dog, good Storm Dog. All right. So, all right, thanks everybody for watching, come here Storm, come here buddy, hi buddy. And we don't have to worry about his claws snagging this wonderful Cool Wig jersey, so he can jump up on me all he wants. Yep, and he loves to. Yep, yep. He loves doing this. So this is the comic quick ship from coolwick.com. And if you use the promo code ROSEDOLL10, like it's spelled on my channel, if you need to check it out for reference, it's kind of a tricky spelling. ROSEDOLL10 on coolwick.com gets you 10% off. Hi, buddy. <laughs> and this is the newest member of our family. This is Storm Dog. Storm Dog, you turn around and show him your pretty eyes. Uh-huh. You say bye-bye. You say bye-bye. Good Storm Dog.
Thanks, everybody, for watching. we got plenty of stuff coming.